My name is Francisca Mutapi. I work at the University of Edinburgh. I work on neglected tropical diseases. Biology is fascinating. I think every child is interested in science and the nature around them. But the thing about biology for me that separates it from all the other sciences is you carry the lab with you. Everything you need to know about biology is about you. You are a living thing. So all the systems, everything. So I was very, very curious to find out how I worked. One of the other nice things about biology, like most sciences, is that your imagination is the only limitation you have. You can have a job that is directly related to biology from teaching, biology research, but there are other jobs such as maintaining um, science communication. You can work as a career civil servant giving advice to politicians on scientific issues. The media, journalism, science journalism, or even um, journalism that is not immediately related to biology. So a lot of that, you can be an artist, um, as long as you understand the form of the living organisms that you're working in. You can be a scientist and um, conduct an awful lot of research. You can do research that is also not biology research, but research that is important for development, for international development. So as long as you're creative and imaginative, the world is your oyster with a biology degree. I work on a worm parasite. It affects people when they come into contact with infective water. So this is water with the infectious stage. These parasites are really horrible. They affect your internal organs, your ability to think, um, your ability to do physical exercise. What we do know is that you develop immunity against these parasites. The immunity develops slowly and it is not 100%. So my research question is, why does it take long to develop immunity? And how can we make the immunity stay longer? So I'm trying to look for ways to speed up the development of immunity and also how to maintain that immunity much longer. So that's an interesting question. I have actually discovered a new parasite. I did this as an undergraduate student, the very first summer job I had. I had to dissect frogs and look for parasites in their bladders. At that time, I hadn't decided to work on the parasites that I work on, but I discovered a relative of these parasites. It's a flatworm. It lives in the bladder of African frogs. Um, the only disadvantage is it wasn't named after me. It was named after my research professor. But it was really a fantastic thing to do as an undergraduate. Um, so I was very excited about that. Regarding treatments, we haven't discovered any new treatments. What I have discovered is how to make better use of a treatment that we already have. So I mentioned that I want to speed up the development of protective immunity. So the treatment that I was working with, I discovered that not only did it kill the worms, which is what it was designed to do, but it also accelerated the development of immunity. And this works in the same way as some of the veterinary vaccines, where you give the infection first, then you treat, it's called an infection treatment vaccine, and for diseases like Tyleria, that's how it works. So I made the discovery for the parasites that I work on that we can do the same thing with a particular drug. Again, not an easy question because deadly can mean different things. You have parasites that kill you, you have parasites that give you chronic infection, and you have parasites that uh, cause de uh, deformities. So if we think of the ones that kill you, you have parasites that kill you because they want to kill you. And one of the parasites that does that is a horsehair worm. It needs its host to commit suicide in order for it to be passed on to the next host. So that's a deadly one. You also have malaria parasites. Uh, they kill you as a byproduct of whatever else they're doing. They don't need to kill you to continue their life cycle, unlike the pinworm. If we think of chronic conditions, uh, snail fever, because you can be affected for decades and have problems with your liver and your cognition. And then if we think of deformities, one of the really interesting parasites is a sea louse that affects um, fish, red snapper. It enters through the gills 
and then develops into an adult and starts eating the tongue. And eventually what it does is it replaces the tongue. So when the red snapper opens its mouth, all you see is this creepy crawly thing in the mouth and it lives there until the red snapper dies. If we want something less gross, uh, but uh, pertaining to humans, elephantitis, filariasis. You've seen those photographs of people with legs that are huge, full of fluid. That's a deformity, so um, deadly in a different way. My team bring me all sorts of papers that ministers are going to read to get me to have a look and opine on what I think about them. Mm -hmm.